I thought uh, I thought we did a lot of good things up front um, versus FIU. Definitely rushing the passer. Um, I think some of the um, more critical plays we had weren't even plays where we actually sacked him, but where we just affected him. Um, so I, I was proud of how we rushed the passer. A um, little inconsistent versus the run. Um, not all of that was on us, but you know we've got to embrace that um, as a defensive line that. We can stop anything uh, if we do our job and then some, regardless of what's going on behind us. So um, we're trying to embrace the little things and try to embrace taking games over up front because I think we're talented enough to do that at times. Um, it's just more of a mindset and getting those guys to play with a ton of moxie and confidence. Um, so that's what we're trying to establish right now. But I was proud of – I thought the effort was better versus Florida International than Western Kentucky. Um, not that our effort was bad versus Western Kentucky, but um, we just hold a really high standard to them and hold their feet to the fire. So uh, overall, you know, I give it a B minus. Um, it, it, it was pretty good, but you know, plenty to improve on. Um, North Alabama, uh, real familiar with, obviously, uh, from where Coach Simons and I have coached and um, friends with a few guys on the staff, and um, I think they do a great job. Um, they'll come in here. This will they'll be really prepared and really well coached and have a lot of. A lot of fresh faces that we don't even see on tape right now because they haven't played a game. They have a lot of transfers. Um, so it'll uh, be a good test for us. Um, definitely not not a game to let down um, because they're going to come into our house and try to take it from us. So pretty excited. Coach, speaking of excited, uh, was it uh, pretty exciting to see Jesse Lemonier get in the game yesterday for the Chargers? Yeah. You know, I, I wasn't able to actually watch the game. Did he? You know, not to make myself look bad, did, did he get in? Because I hadn't talked to him today. Um, According to the participation chart, he did get in. Yeah, he yeah. I, I knew he would. You know, he got he got activated so late in the week, you know, I didn't know how much how involved he'd get to be in the game plan. Um, so, um, oh, yeah, man, he, he deserves it, man. That, that dude works so hard. I love him like a son. And, it, you know, I talked to him yesterday uh, when he was about to head to the stadium. And, um, you know, I, I'm so proud of him. Hopefully – um, I can find a way to watch it um, this next weekend. Um, I just wasn't able to find a way to watch the actual game. Um, but I'm really, really happy for him, man. Anytime you can see your players uh, reach their goals and their dreams, you know, he's got a degree in his hand and then he's out there playing in the NFL in California. Um, so I'm, I'm really proud and happy for him. Uh, we'll go now to Damian Sordolette from the Westbrook News in advance. Coach, uh, Darrell Johnson was telling us last week about his – the recruiting process and how he said he had been contacting Liberty and contacting Liberty and hadn't heard anything back. And then I think the story he told was Sam Gregg was uh, recruiting a, an offensive lineman and then turned over the tape to you and said, take a look at this defensive end. And all of a sudden the recruiting process started. Um, what do you re re remember from that? And uh, what have you seen in Darrell that through adding weight has uh, made you think, you know, we, we, so far through two weeks of aced uh, this recruiting? Um, you know, the story was, um, so his, his area was Coach Pope's area. Um, I had a, a junior college that's in Georgia, and uh, they played that junior college, and I was watching an offensive lineman to show Coach Greg, and then when I sent the tape to Coach Greg, Coach Greg's, well, he didn't actually play that well. This kid from ASA is kicking his butt. And uh, so um, I, I then turned around and watched it, and, you know, Darrell, I think, I think he might have led the country in sacks in junior college. Um, so, uh, you know, he, he just stood out for me really early. I think where he was very first Division One offer. Um, and, you know, I think, I think everybody was a little afraid because he was a little thinner in junior college than he is now. And um, I, don't know, I don't know why people didn't like him, but I know I loved him um, very early on in the process. And um, his personality, fell in love with that. And Miss Kiffany, his mom, um, built a great relationship with her. And I was able to in-home visit him twice um, before uh, he came uh, to Liberty. Um, so just building that relationship with them was great. And, yeah, I mean, we feel like we've hit a home run. You know, the big thing, Darrell, you know, is, that he's learning is even though he's getting all these stats and stuff like that, there's a lot of plays out there he still can make. Um, and... Uh, you know, I think having Trayshawn on the other side of him, who's kind of like our, uh, you know, do-it-all guy, most accountable guy, um, you know, is a good example for him. So they kind of feed off each other. So I'm 
really liking what they're doing. But yes, that was a that was a fun process, and yes, it feels great when you recruit a guy to come in and uh, kind of be what he's supposed to be. But he's still got a lot to learn, and um, I, I'm excited to see him grow. Coach, to to follow up on that, when you're evaluating guys, I mean. You mentioned he, he led the country in sacks at JUCO. It doesn't always translate, the stats alone. I no, mean, sir. What are some of the things that you're really kind of trying to hone in on? I mean, is it looking at a guy saying, hey, he could put on you know 20 pounds or whatever? I mean, what are some of the factors that come in that really are the deciding ones? Well, just him specifically, you know, I, I saw that he had a really good first step. Um, and he wasn't going against bad competition. You know, there's plenty of guys who lead the country in sacks in junior college that – may play against terrible competition every week, you know, so that doesn't really translate like you're saying. Um, but he was playing against good teams. Um, then, you know, Darrell, I don't know if y'all re- realize this, this is only the third year Darrell's played defensive end in his life. Um, you know, he was a high school linebacker in safety. Um, so um, when he got to junior college, he was a linebacker, some type of hybrid position. He redshirted, and then he only played two years of defensive end there. So this is only his third year of playing defensive end. So it's still very new to him. Um, so for him to have that production that he had, um, you know, that, you know, I felt like sky's the limit, you know, once he can learn something. And I know his Juco D-line coach, he's a really good coach, um, and I trusted him. Um, so I think I think that's kind of when you're recruiting, especially a junior college athlete, it's, you know, who they're playing, who are they being coached by, what's their story, and just, you know, it's it's not one thing but all those things. Next, we go to John Manson from a sea of red. Coach, I noticed on Saturday Austin Lewis played a lot of time at a tackle. Uh, is that something you envision him going forward playing there, or could he go back and forth, um, or was it just a game plan type thing? Uh, you know, I said that early in the year um, that I thought he could kind of be the Swiss Army knife for us. Um, so, I mean, I think you'll see him play both um, because we're really talented at that end spot. You know, Steve Singh's got to play in his first game this weekend and did really well. Um, you know, if you if I graded effort out of all the guys who played, he he by far graded the highest. I mean, you go back and watch that touchdown. I mean, he chased the guy all the way to the goal line, seventy yards down the field. Um, so that it, it means something to him. Um, so just finding ways where we can get um, the most good players on the field at a time. Um, so I just you know that's what we did this week. He'll play both. You know, he could play both this week. You know, Austin's a real smart kid um, that's played a lot of football already. Um, so it, it was good to see him play, and he did fairly well at three technique. You know, I think he only had one bust. Um, so um, I think you'll see him play both. Yes, sir. Any questions here for Flames defensive line coach Josh Aldridge? Uh, Damian, go ahead. How how would you grade the freshman defensive linemen who have played so far this year? I know Akil missed uh, this past game, but played in the opener when Darrell was dealing with cramps on the sideline. Uh, how would you feel that those guys have done so far, and you know the reps they've received? Uh, I you know I'd give them a really high grade. I don't know what letter I'd give it, but I'd give them a really high grade. You know Steve Steve graded out I think eighty nine percent this weekend, um, so that's pretty good for your first game. Um, and Akil, I believe, was around that same deal against Western Kentucky. So, um, you know, for them, it's the abilities there. You know, I, there's no evaluation for me from the standpoint of ability. It's just learning what we want them to do um, because you just – when you have so many guys who are solid athletically, there's only so many reps to go around at practice. You know what I mean? So um, just getting them in those spots slowly but surely is what we're trying to do. But I think – um, I think they've kind of crossed that threshold now, you know, as we get into October here soon, um, uh, of being able to help us on every down, not just passing downs and not just run downs. I think you can trust them. Um, and that's what they're building up trust. And Kenny Charles, too. You know, Kenny Charles is a guy whose role is about to get bigger as well. You know, I know you're not, you haven't seen him in a game yet, but uh, behind the scenes, him and Will Green are getting a lot better every single day. So um, I, think, I think you'll see both of them as well.